Hey, good morning. This is Wednesday, September 2nd of 2020 already. And this is a brief moment with the Psalms and time to pray together. This morning we'll be reading from the 119th Psalm. And don't worry, as long as the 119th Psalm is, we'll just take a portion of that. So perhaps uh, the rest of it will be left for the rest of this week for you to look at because that is a very long psalm. And what I'm thinking about with uh, this portion of the 119th Psalm this morning is how without the gracious gifts of God, you and I would otherwise spend our time. So much of what I do or what I hear about people doing at this point is, in all honesty, futile, circular, hamster on a wheel type things. Things that are digital. Things where if you or I were to be gone from them tomorrow, someone else would be able to be brought in and do them the exact same. These are things that mechanize us or robot us. They're mechanical, they're computer, and they're really just by rote. You and I would love to believe that there is purpose and that there is depth and that there is fullness for us beyond these things. We are clinging to the idea that there is a richness or a direction or a hope in life for us. So the thing is, is that the path from the mechanical and the digital, the things that are required and that we pretty much can't get away from because this is who we are now, to this depth and to this richness, involves God's speaking to us. It involves being given instruction and growth and being led into a way of deliberateness and centeredness. That's why we're gathered, and that is the message of the few verses from Psalm 119 uh, that I'll read for us now. This begins with the 33rd verse. Teach me, O Lord the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law, and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I will delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees, and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I long for your precepts. Because in your righteousness, you give me life. Now, I don't know if you were counting. I don't know if you were counting along as I read that. But did you count the number of synonyms this psalm uses? There's eight ways that a certain idea is shared. Decrees. Words. Commands. Statutes laws, ordinances, promises, and precepts. God has spoken, and often the voice or the direction of God is called the law. Psalm 119, the entire thing of which I just read a portion, is what's called an acrostic poem. It follows along all orderly life all mechanically, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and it repeats this order a few times. 
this is stability, it's bedrock, it's very mechanical, it's a very precise way to do things. The psalmist knows that it's into these mechanical process that God's spirit can riff over the top of or breathe life into. You see, the Psalms are ancient and they're old. And the point has to do with taking what they say and being centered down into the stability and the tradition and the uh, timelessness of it. But that having been given what they have to say, that life is breathed into who we are and that our day and our time is about more than just following mechanized, ordered patterns. The point, I think, has to do with living. And for living to really be deep and really be rich, that life needs to be about more than just an echo chamber of news cycles. Or it needs to be about more than rubber stamps on top of rubber stamps for things that we already think we might have already known before the stamping even began. It's a breath. And it's a direction that admittedly builds us up or asks us to grow in a way that's different from the world or the process or the machine that we're stuck in. It's a way that builds out and up and carries us along with it. There is a way, God's way, that draws from a deep and ancient timeless source of creation. And it becomes a path. It's God's law, God's word, that God breathed life into for us. And this becomes a pathway for us. A direction. An impetus. A purpose through the machine and to, through the mechanization that would otherwise robot us and make us feel like we're just spinning on that wheel. It is its own structure. It is its own thing, process. But the law seeks to humanize us in a world that otherwise wouldn't. It speaks to spirit and depth and richness. And this becomes my prayer for you. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for filling our lungs with breath this morning. That as we woke to today's daylight, that this was its own day, September 2nd, 2020, the only time that we'll live and be a part of this day, a day that you have made. And we ask that through the things that are required of us today, many of them maybe now on a computer or maybe uh, done in a way that's new but very mechanized to us, that you would remind us that we are yours and that we have a soul and that over the top of the things that are robotic, you can breathe opportunities like conversations we wouldn't have or moments with our families that we wouldn't have and that you can bring a purpose and a depth out of them. And we ask that you would remind us today that our baptism is not a baptism to be a part of one more moment of the machine, but it's to remind us that we are given life and breath so that of all the mechanized things that we live in, you riff over the top of them with joy and moments. And we ask that you would help us to see them and help us to know your providence and your care for us. We ask today that you would give us moments of laughter and of joy and reminder of your voice. We ask that you would fill us by your spirit and guide us with your word or with your law. 
and that this guidance not be a rote or mechanized thing, but that it be vibrant and that we have the moment to know you and experience something. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Stay safe. Indeed, I hope that you have wonderful moments at some points today and that in them you take a breath and no joy. See you soon.